It's no secret that software developers are very, very well paid. In fact, today it is one of the highest paid and most in demand professions in the entire world. But it's also no secret that not all software engineer salaries are created equal. What most people fail to consider is that there are massive differences in the salaries of software engineers when considering different companies, different types of jobs and different countries. For example, just look at these differences in the average software engineer salary at Google in San Francisco and in Paris, France. That means that just learning to code alone is not enough to land the highest paying jobs that can pay up to $150,000 just for a junior engineer. You also need to be very strategic about how you get your job where you work and what country you work in. So let's take a look in detail the exact process that I would follow to get the absolute highest salaries as a software engineer. Because after all, where's the point in working the same job for $40,000 when you could be doing that same job for $150,000? It's simply a no brainer. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the kinds of companies that you're going to work for. Now, there are big differences between what I call big tech companies. So the Googles, the Metas, the Amazons, and like sort of regular big companies that have have tech jobs you can think of like banks or just any corporation and then startups so new emerging companies all of these types of companies can be extremely well but they all have their different pros and cons now it's probably no surprise that if you simply want to earn the highest possible salary like the highest cash compensation your best bet is going to be working for one of the big tech companies or the fan companies but that doesn't actually mean that these are necessarily the best companies to work for if your goal is total net compensation throughout your career and we'll talk about how in a second but the reason why on the surface these companies are going to pay the highest compensation is because these companies are some of the most profitable companies in the world they have the biggest budgets they make the most money so therefore they can simply offer their employees much more money than regular companies and therefore outbid their competitors and get the best employees and throughout the years it has been the case that simply by working for one of these companies for a couple of years can make you a multi multi millionaire although these days their compensation isn't quite at the level but that it perhaps once was i made a full video about that that you can watch here but nevertheless working for one of these companies is an almost surefire way to financial wealth in this day and age of course the downside is that it is much more difficult to get into these companies but now let's talk about just regular ass companies these are going to be medium paid so they're going to pay pretty well, nowhere near the same level as a big tech company, but it's gonna have perhaps the benefit that it's gonna be more stable. You're gonna be more likely to be able to make a very long career at these companies because they don't have the same churn, they don't have the same competition within the company as the big tech companies do. While it might take you longer to get these very high salary numbers, if you're simply looking for stability, this might be a good option. But now let's talk about startups. Now startups are gonna be very, very interesting and it's gonna be right for a very specific kind of person. Because while big companies might offer the best salary right off the bat, what startups offer is something a bit different. And that is going to be number one, more experience. And number two, equity. If you're looking at your career long term, like in the long run, how can you maximize your earnings throughout your career? What you should actually focus on is not the cash salary that you're getting straight out of university or straight after your online bootcamp or something like that. At the beginning of your career, the smartest developers are actually optimizing for as much experience as possible because it is that experience that is then later on in your career going to pay you the most. So why do startups give you more experience? Well, simply put, at a startup, because they're more stripped for resources, you are going to be working a lot more. And in addition to cash compensation, what startups offer is equity. Meaning that especially if you're very early at a startup, you're one of the earliest employees, you're gonna get some sort of equity, some sort of ownership stake in that company. And of course, if that company ends up doing well, which by the way, 99% of them don't do, that equity could turn into millions and millions of dollars. Just something to think about. Now, how do you actually learn to code properly to earn the highest salaries? Now, whichever type of company you're looking to target, your goal in the beginning should be to learn the right practical software engineering skills. Now, the best way to do this is to actually work for a company and gain as much experience that way. But to even get your first job, you're going to need to have the right foundations of software development. In this day and age, you pretty much need to be a competent software developer to even get your first junior position. 
And the problem is that these days, for example, computer science degrees do not teach you the practical skills that you actually need in the real world. So even if you go through a computer science degree, you might not even know how to code at the end of it. You're gonna have to learn all of this on your own and most people just don't know how to do this properly because it's not very easy. So to learn these skills in the right way, what I would recommend you to do is go through a program like Course Careers that is specifically designed to take you, anyone, with no experience, no degree, from zero to a competent software developer. What Course Careers have done is they've essentially looked at all the things that tech companies actually want and they've designed their program based on those requirements. Not some outdated requirements of a computer science degree that teaches things that no one in the industry actually cares about. The way it's gonna work is that you're gonna go through a foundational software development course that's taught by Tech with Tim and then you're gonna choose a specialization based on the kind of developer that you want to become. And at the end of it all, they're not just gonna leave you to go and find a job on your own like most programs. What they've actually done is developed connections with actual tech companies and then told them, hey, we have a bunch of candidates here who've gone through our program, who have the skills that you actually want. Would you like to hire them? And from the company's perspective, this is much easier than going through a hundred resumes. So that is why people like Max, for example, have been able to land a job directly via course careers without applying for a job themselves at all. And this is still not all because throughout the program, you also get mentoring. You get access to a full support group where you can talk to the instructors of the program directly whenever you get stuck. So course careers is the most premium and the most modern program out there to train you into a real software developer. So if you're looking to invest in yourself and your your career, then I recommend you check out the free introduction course to software development down below by Course Career. So you can go through that course, understand what software development is, and after that, you can go through the full program if you're interested. Thank you for Course Careers for partnering with me to make this video, and now let's move on. So let's talk about what are the highest paid countries for software developers. So I did some analysis a while back on the average salaries across different cities across the world. And then I even calculated like the tax that you would pay, the cost of living, things like this. I leave the tweet where I share this screenshot down below in the description if you wanna look at it. But just look at these differences. For example, the average gross software engineer salary in Seattle is $220,000. The average in Berlin, which is also a developed country in Europe, is $89,000. So more than double just because you're in the US. And then once you consider that in Europe, tax is gonna be higher, the situation gets even worse. So I've looked at a lot of this kind of data and broadly we can say that there are two countries that stand far above any other in terms of software engineer salaries. And those are gonna be the United States and Switzerland. And out of those two, obviously US is the tech center of the entire world. It's gonna have not only the highest salary, but also the highest number of job opportunities. But obviously if you're not a US citizen, or you don't have any connection to the US, like you studied there or something, it's gonna be very difficult for you to just go there. So if you're European, your best option, if your goal is compensation, is going to be Switzerland. And now people will say like, oh, but US and Switzerland, they're so much more expensive. They're not that much more expensive, okay? You're still gonna be far better off in one of those two countries than any other place. But now let's say you're not European and you're not from the US. How can you actually move to one of these countries? Well, sadly, it is not that simple. One of the other spaces where I'm sort of an expert in outside of tech is actually the space of moving internationally, setting up companies, residency, things like this. I have a second channel where I talk about all this stuff. And what I can tell you is that simply moving from one country to another is not always very simple, especially if you're trying to do that via working a job in that new country. If you're moving as an entrepreneur or a wealthy person, it's always gonna be a lot more simple. But there are three broad ways that you can sort of get around this and actually manage to move to one of these countries. Let's say you're from a much poorer country like India or Southeast Asia or something like that. And the number one is gonna to be to study there and to get a work visa. So especially in the US, I believe if you study there, as in you get a degree there, after that, you're automatically gonna have what's called optional practical training that allows you to work in the country for three years. And at the end of that, hopefully if the company you work for likes you and things like this, they're gonna be able to sponsor you an actual, what you call the H-1B work visa that's gonna allow you to stay in the country and work for longer. I'm not saying I recommend this, I'm not saying the cost of getting a computer science degree is worth it, but if you really, really wanna go there and you do the math and you figure out that this is the best way for you, then that is an option. The second way is to do an intercompany transfer from your home country. Now, before I actually left my software engineering job to become an entrepreneur, my plan was always to end up working in the US. And my plan to do that 
was to first work in my home country at the time, which was the UK, for a UK company that's an international company that also has a presence in the US. It's actually a US-based company. And then after a couple of years, after I built some trust and credibility within the company, I would be able to get an intercompany transfer to the US because there's a specific type of visa that is targeted at employees transferring within a company to the US. The con is that you're just gonna have to wait a couple of years. You're gonna have to do a really good job in your home country first, and then you're gonna be able to make the move. And it's not gonna be available to everyone. You're gonna have to actually perform extremely well. And the third way, and that I increasingly actually think is the best path for almost anyone is to work remotely as a freelancer. Now, the rise of remote work has essentially democratized the access to these really high paying jobs within software development and many other industries. As a software engineer, you're no longer necessarily bound by these geographical constraints because a lot of companies these days will have projects, will have work that they want to be done by a freelancer on a contract basis rather than needing to hire a full-time employee because they might just have a project like we need to build this website. They might not want to hire a full-time employee to do that. They might just say like, okay, I'm just gonna hire a contractor. I don't care where they're based. I don't wanna make them my employee, but I'm just willing to pay them to do this work. And doing work like this as a freelancer from abroad is much, much easier than going to that country as an employee. And the additional benefit is that often you can actually get paid more as a freelancer because you don't have all the security and the protection of an employment contract. You can work for companies in Europe, in US, get that level of pay while paying a much lower cost of living somewhere like Southeast Asia, for example, which is actually where I am right now. And this is gonna allow you to optimize more for taxes. You don't have to pay the crazy taxation of the Western world. You can base yourself in a place like Dubai, Singapore, where taxation is much lower, or just travel the world as a digital nomad and not be a tax resident of anywhere. So if you're not based in the US and you wanna be a software developer, I would actually say that this is the best and the fastest path for you to get those higher salaries, those highest earnings, no matter where you're based, because you have access to the same jobs as anyone else in the world. Now to actually do this, you're going to have to have the right skills. You can't just learn some basics of coding and think that you can actually earn these salaries. It doesn't work that way. So if you wanna know exactly how you can go from zero to having all the skills that you need to earn these salaries and to actually be the software developers that these companies want to hire, I recommend you watch this video right here where I go through in order everything that you need to learn. So go watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.